This December, I'm playing one season in every FIFA from FIFA 10 all the way to FIFA 19, and today we're playing FIFA 14. We're back where it all started, and I mean that in two different ways. FIFA 14 was the first episode of the first mega career, and Serie A was also the first episode of the second mega career, and thanks to your voting, we've confirmed our spot as Roma's next manager. This season will all be about one thing, Francesco Totti. He won't retire for another two years, but realistically, this is his last dance. His technicals are amazing, his mental stats are still elite, but he's not quite gone into the Murtasaka level of pace just yet. I know how much the team and Totti mean to Romans, in fact, I was lucky enough to go there to watch a match last year. That game is exactly why we're making our first signing too, Paolo Dybala, welcome to Roma a full seven years early. You might notice what we're trying to do here, we're actually going to try and play strikerless this season. To do this, we'll need some pace on the wing, so let's also sign the FIFA 14 GOAT, Victor Ababo, a full year sooner than he actually joined Roma in real life. I'm actually really happy with the team now. Ibarbo and Javinho will be our wide strikers, with Totti and Dabala as our playmakers. Behind them, we have De Rossi and Pjanic, with Maicon and Michael Bastos trying to invert into midfield to support them. Benatia is one of the best defenders in the world back here, and Castan anchored my ultimate team side in FIFA 14 the entire season. Just to pad out our team, let's also sign a 20-year-old Brazilian keeper called Alisson, a 19-year-old winger called Mohamed Salah, and a 20-year-old centre-back called Antonio Rudiger. I have a feeling that these three players might get quite good in the future. Because I've played quite a lot of FIFA 14 recently, no preseason is really needed. The simulated results look really good though, we have three wins from our three matches. Annoyingly, the Serie A season starts quite late into the transfer window, so if going strikeless in the most target man meta game of all time doesn't work, we actually can't correct it until January. We get off to a decent start and thankfully the tactic does seem to work. False 9 isn't actually a player instruction on this game, so having two players as centre forwards does actually make one of them usually drop off. While I show you the highlights of how this works, let's talk about some of our goals for this season. Of course, I want to win the title, but at the same time, I want to give Francesco Totti his best season ever. Of course, this is a very subjective thing to do, so instead we're going to use goals and assists as our benchmark. 36-year-old Totti will be trying to roll back to the 2006-7 season, where he managed to finish the season with a total of 34 goals and assists. After 10 games, we're already at 5 goals and 5 assists with Totti, so if we can keep this up, we'll be hitting about 40 by the end of the season. If we go on the squad view, you can already see that some of our players are starting to deteriorate. Goalkeeper Morgan De Sanctis is actually older than Totti and he's dropped in overall, Totti himself has got worse, and Mike on 2 at fullback. I really wish we had FIFA 15's overpowered training right now, because Totti would actually probably be improving every single week. Instead of improving our players in training though, we have a big game against Lazio, the Derby della Capitale. This is the game that Totti always steps up. He's the leading scorer of all time against Lazio, and he stepped up for a free kick right here. He runs up to the ball, hits it over the wall, and straight in past the goalkeeper. What a start it is to this Derby game. I think that's actually the first free kick we've scored since we had Pirlo all the way back on FIFA 10. Now we had the lead, it was all about keeping it. Maicon would intercept a clearance, but he'd head it straight to Miroslav closer. That could have easily been a goal from the goal kick. Cabral decides to keep running backwards and Edison gets there before him and just slots it straight past the goalkeeper. That is absolutely a terrible goal to concede. Anyway, for the rest of the game, of course, we're going to try and win this one. Totti would link up with De Rossi. That was going straight in the top corner. Good save there from Marchetti. We have another counter-attack. De Rossi finds the baller, but he's marginally offside. And that's going to deny Totti the chance to tap the ball into an open net. So the game's going to end 1-1. And it extends our unbeaten streak at the start of the season, which is going surprisingly well. And also, it shows that Totti does remain competitive. The game is absolutely right there. Against Sampdoria, we had some more chances with Totti. He turned and tried to finesse it in the top corner, miles off in the end. A few minutes later though, he played a brilliant three ball to Javinho, one on one. You know the FIFA 14 legend is not going to miss that one. Yet another assist there for Francesco Totti. Our defense was also playing pretty well. I mean, we did everything we could here to prevent Sampdoria scoring and we were successful. 60 minutes into the game, Totti took another long shot and this time he finds the top corner. This man is absolutely unstoppable. When I went into this episode, I thought, you know, he'd be all right. We'd get a few goals here and there, but probably fail to break that 
that record we're going for. But after 15 games, we have 11 goals and 7 assists. The man is absolutely on fire and we are rocketing up the league because of Totti. You see his ball control here. On FIFA 14, it's hard to dribble, but Totti makes it look easy. Pjanic nearly earning him yet another assist. Like I said before, our defence was also really good. De Sanctis saving it and look at that tackle there from Maicon. That level of passion and determination early in the season has actually left us first in Serie A. 10 wins, 4 draws and 1 loss and Totti has been at the middle of it all. You might have noticed at the top of the table we have both Milan clubs and Juventus and we've still got to play all three of them in the last half of the season. You can see that Milan got very lucky with probably the worst goal we conceded the entire season. El Shawari, what a FIFA 14 throwback that guy is. We were still making chances though, Ibarbo off the wing, passes it to Adam Lajic and De Shiglio is just there to stop it. That would actually be our best chance. And briefly, we would get caught up a little bit, but then we'd go on to win another three matches in a row and stay top. This game against Inter Milan would basically drop them out of the title race if we could win. It was absolutely massive. Ibarbo would find Dybala. Of course, the young man doesn't have the best composure, and unlike that AC Milan goal, we can't quite get it to bobble into the far corner. We'd make another chance. Totti getting absolutely wiped out in the box. Dybala recovered it and tried to shoot from a bizarre angle. It really could have found the top corner, but it's very unlikely that it would. We keep pressing into the second half. Totti again. What a Pass that is Victor Ababo into the box on the volley, and that's a great save from Samir Handanovic, another FIFA 14 throwback player right there. Of course, into Milan, they're third for a reason. They have a lot of very good attackers. It was three on one against our goalkeeper, but he slides in. What a tackle that is. Pereira was not expecting him to do that, the 37-year-old keeper. So after 30 games, we have three big men. Strootman, 14 assists. De Rossi, 15. And then Totti, 21 goals and 10 assists in 30 games. After 33 games, we were in a pretty good position. But after 36, it was even better. Four-point lead over Juventus. And we were playing them in the next match. Our entire season basically came down to this game. Would we get our first Serie A title? Would we get Totti a last Serie A title? Well, as always, we were playing on Legendary. We had our first team out there. Salah has now probably overtaken Ibarbo in terms of effectiveness. So he's starting on the right. Totti and Lajic have been our best two players. So we're keeping Dybala on the bench in case we need a little bit of pace against the team he would eventually go on to join. We're at home. It's, of course, a sellout crowd at the Stadio Olimpico, licensed in FIFA 14. A really cool ground in real life as well. Can Francesco Totti do it? Can Florentino Toscani win his first Serie A title? Of course, a boyhood Roma fan. We're about to find out. Let's have one last look at the table. So we're four points ahead with two games in hand. That means a draw here would mean we're four points ahead with one game in hand. So a draw is fine. Of course, a win would also win us the title. We just can't lose because then we go into the final match just one point ahead of Juventus. Saitaridis, what a pass that is to Salah. Off the crossbar and Lajic is there. Diving header, that determination to get his 11th goal of the season. Of course, we wanted to score as early as possible, but we weren't expecting to score in the 7th minute against a team with Bonucci, Chiellini and Barzagli and Ogbonna. They're playing four centre-backs and we have scored past all of them. Of course, Juventus very dangerous on the attack. Paul Pogba doing some good dribbling in the middle. Quadro, Asamoata, Marquisio. They've got it out wide. Of course, always going to be a threat on FIFA 14. Great tackle that from Balzaretti. Nothing's going to happen from the corner and it's our turn to counter-attack. Bonucci just intercepting it there ahead of Adam Lajic. De Rossi would win the header out to Pepe, but intercepted by Jovinho. Is it going to be another chance for Adam Lajic? He's not quite got enough pace to get there ahead of Gianluigi Buffon but it's turning into one of those games. Mehdi Bonatia getting a yellow card for a quite questionable tackle right there, and it's going to be a free kick. Good job that Juventus don't have Pirlo anymore. Asamoa to Tevez. Very, very ambitious, but outside the boot, Travella shots. Maybe they are the meta on FIFA 14, just like they are on FC 24. Who knows? Salah gets the ball, though. Plays it to Totti. He's got a good runner, but he doesn't need him. Totti is going to shoot, isn't he? That would have been amazing. That would have been the perfect cherry on the top if we do go on to win or draw this game. Carlos Tevez there with his bulldog-like approach. How many times did we hear that commentary when we were playing FIFA 14? Oh my god, that's one of the most memorable lines. And that's one of the least memorable shots you'll probably ever see. I don't know why he's shooting from 45 meters, but... You know, if it goes in, he looks like an absolute genius. Salah there, plays it to Totti. He's got the run. He somehow found Jovino. 
Can he pull it back to Salah? He can't. Chiellini with the block and then the overhead kick clearance. Very athletic there from Chiellini. Salah passes back to Saitaridis. Oh, you don't want to lose the ball there at 1-0, but I suppose a draw is fine. Rudiger, we brought Rudiger in to replace Castan when he got injured. And despite being 71 overall, I think he's actually played better than Castan did. But thankfully, we've got both in there and we might need them now. Vuknic out to Vidal. Bonatia pressing the defensive midfielders and there's a big gap there. Are they going to capitalise Vidal? And that's another great save from De Sanctis. He might be old, but that is the last save of the game and the season. Serie A winners of Roma. Francesco Totti, the captain, will be the one that's going to be lifting it. You can see how much it means to him. This will be Roma and Totti's first Serie A title since the year 2001. It would also be the first time Totti's been top scorer in the league since 2007. It's been by far one of the most fun saves I've ever done. Last time I played FIFA 14, I didn't really like it. But playing with Totti, playing with Roma, and playing in this kind of situation has made it really, really fun. I do now recommend you go back and try FIFA 14. I think I said in the past that it's probably not worth trying, but I think it probably is now. So thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Make sure you subscribe for FIFA 15 and vote in the poll for that as well. Thank you for watching. Cheers and goodbye.